Ask yourself before moving on with this video, are you really willing to set yourself up for and prepare yourself for long-term success? Surgery is just one tool. It's time to put the other tools in the toolbox because it's your body, your health, your life. Bariatric surgery is a great tool to help you manage your weight, but it's just that, a tool. And it takes a lot of hard work and preparation for it to work. The more thought you put into and the more lifestyle changes you make before surgery, the easier the transition and the better you will be hitting the ground running with your weight loss. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to prepare yourself for bariatric surgery. But real talk though, are you ready? Number one, the reality, everyone is different. It's your responsibility to know the risks and also the possible side effects. The best thing you can do to prepare is review the guidelines your surgeon gave to you. I'm gonna tell you to prepare for the possibilities, but don't like super hyper focus on it. To be honest, you really are not going to know until you know. The real deal is your taste buds change. Sometimes you'll be hungry. There's no guarantee that your hunger hormone is removed. Some people will not be hungry at all. Some will be ravenous. Some of you will gain weight right away after surgery. That's water weight. That's normal. Some of you, a lot of us have gas pain and maybe even some constipation. But then again, some of you might experience some diarrhea. Some of you might feel nauseous. Some of you might have a sore throat. And some of us don't feel anything at all. Maybe just being a bit tired. Now, all those things, I can't tell you what's gonna happen. Your surgeon can't even tell you what's gonna happen. You're not gonna know until you know. The thing is, is to remember if these possible side effects happen or not, or whatever degree that they are happening to you, it's most likely gonna start to dissipate as you move forward. You're healing, you've just had surgery. These things can happen. They might happen at different levels. Each day might be a little bit different. You just got to remember it's pretty much normal and you just kind of have to be patient and love yourself through this stage. Now, if you're concerned, you call your surgeon. That's why they're there. Because the reality is social media is not your surgeon. Behavior modifications are going to be needed to be or to get long-term success. So remember when you're preparing for surgery, you gotta remember that there are gonna be some modifications you're gonna have to do, some lifestyle changes you're gonna have to do. Surgery is, is not a quick fix. It doesn't mean instantly you're gonna lose weight overnight. You're gonna have to make some changes. So part of preparation is understanding the mindset to do so. It's more of a growth mindset than a fixed mindset. If you really do want long-term success, your first year is all about learning about yourself and what you need to do to get the results that you wanna get. Review your bigger why. It has to be more than just losing weight. I know that's what you want, but your bigger why is gonna be bigger than just losing weight. What's your bigger why? Part of preparation is preparing others. Decide to tell or not to tell at whatever level, how many details, it's your personal choice. But if you do have people that are in the same household or very close to you, or you're gonna need support from, you're gonna have to decide to tell them and what kind of details that you need to tell them. I always say, ask for support, not permission. And remember, I know it seems like they should know if they know you, but the thing is, tell them how to support you. A lot of people can't read mine, so be very explicit. Tell them exactly how they can support you. This is obvious to some, but it just isn't to others and there's no judgment or shame in this, but I've read it over and over and over again. I've seen people say it, 
so this concerns me. So I think this is super important when you are preparing for surgery, make sure you're covered, check your insurance, what has been approved and how much are you responsible for? Don't get caught with surprises as you are getting wheeled into your surgery. Surgery is expensive. Do not go under the knife until you know exactly what is covered, what is approved, and how much you are responsible for. Who needs that extra stress after surgery? One of the biggest things you can do to help yourself prepare for surgery is really understand the purpose and the importance of the pre-op diet and that kind of full liquid stage. Now, not everyone's going to get a two-week or a three-week or a one-week pre-op diet. It really, really depends on your surgeon and your program. Now, most of us, at least, the very least, the 12 hours before, maybe even the 24 hours, you're in that kind of clear liquid stage. Now, understanding the importance of that pre-op diet or that preparation diet before you undergo surgery is super important. The reasons being is it helps to cleanse your stomach and get rid of any solids within your digestive tract. It reduces stomach acid. It helps to shrink the liver. And all of these things helps make the surgery safer for you and the surgeon and the surgical team that's working on you. It reduces risks and complications for you. It helps for a better anesthesia experience. A lot of times it allows, if you kind of really followed your pre-op diet and you're kind of a really great candidate for surgery, then it'll make your surgery shorter. You always want a shorter surgery. You don't want to be under anesthesia longer than you have to be. And it actually helps us to mentally prepare. So I see so many times people say, I'm in my pre-op diet. Is it okay to cheat? You know that's up to you, right? Ask yourself, if I have this item, if I cheat on my pre-op diet, what really is at stake for me if I do so? Time to stop mourning. Example, food funerals. We're in our pre-op stage and we're preparing for surgery. Yes, we're kind of at the beginning of it all. And you will have to prepare yourself to feel a little left out. Kind of left out of dining situations, social gatherings. This is just short term. And think of it in a way when you're preparing yourself and you're feeling a left out and you can't go to that event or you, you don't feel comfortable in this social gathering because you're in the pre-op stage, you're in your pre-op diet. Remember, this is going to kind of continue after post-surgery as well when you're healing and you're in the different stages as well. So it's a time to kind of sit back and observe how is food, what is food doing in your life? How what role does food have? Really be observant. Take the time to kind of see what is food? How does food play in your life? Or how does it play into my own personal identity? Start to identify the changes that you might have to communicate with others, like all your key stakeholders, your family, your friends, uh, events that are coming up. Just kind of think ahead. What are some changes? What are some tweaks that you're going to have to do? And kind of have a plan on how to handle that. Just don't go into it blind because you're gonna feel deprived. Grieve what you have to grieve, and then you have to decide to move on. You cannot have 10 food funerals. Oh my God, I'm never gonna have that favorite dish again. Oh my God, I'm never gonna do this. This is only, this is not serving you in any way. You will be able to have any food that you want later on. There is a transition stage. There's a healing stage. This is all about losing weight, isn't it for you? It's about getting to your bigger why. So you're going to have to make some sacrifices, but that doesn't mean forever. You might choose in the future that you don't want that anymore. This might not serve you, but it's not in your best interest to have 10, 20 food funerals. Mourn and move on. You will figure out a way how to introduce socializing with food with friends again. Start to think about why you eat. Bariatric surgery is not brain surgery. So if you eat for other reasons, 
than just hunger, like boredom, stress, habit, emotions, all the other reasons that you eat other than just hunger, you still will be managing the head hunger. Surgery will change how much you can eat at one time, but it doesn't force the changes and the reasons why you eat and what you choose to eat. Start building a safe food environment so you can weed out that mindless eating. Keep the food off the counters, eat without distractions, eat off a plate instead of out of the container, slow down. Once again, it's a time to kind of self-reflect, be an observer, and ask yourself, do you need to keep learning, developing other skills in this area? Mentally prepare. Keep a list of non-food items that you can go to when you're under stress. Losing the ability to eat, to cover up an emotion or cover up some stress we're experiencing is almost like losing a friend. Start practicing using other methods to cope with stress or even boredom so that you can start practicing what works for you and what doesn't. As simple as it sounds, keep your hands busy. There's a lot of adult coloring books out there. That's what I used. I never did it before, but I found it to be soothing and relaxing actually. Maybe develop a new craft. I don't know, do you crochet or knit? Do you, are you an artist? Do you develop a hobby? Just keep your hands busy. Get out of the house, try going for a walk. Have a list of support people that really truly support you that you can call and just talk through that moment. Maybe it's another fellow bariatric patient. Maybe it's a good friend, a family member, or maybe just check in with your bariatric team. Maybe there's some support groups out there. Maybe there's a list of people that are willing to talk to people that need a little bit of extra help to cope with stress. Start with some real, realistic expectations. You're not gonna wake up thin after bariatric surgery. You know that surgery is not the immediate answer to weight loss. Rather, it's an internal tool. It'll be in the form of a smaller stomach or a rerouted digestive tract. It's a tool that will help you with your weight loss journey, but it's not the only tool. Don't get so discouraged if you don't get the same results as you're seeing as typical results. Everyone is different. We keep saying that they have different bodies and programs and surgeons and different lifestyles and diet habits. All these things play a role in weight loss success. Don't try to do it alone. Support is everything. Seek out your primary doctor, maybe talk to your surgeon. Maybe there's a team member on the bariatric team that helps you with this. Maybe there's a counselor, a good friend, a supportive member that you're working with and ask them to help you set long-term goals. Talking to someone that's been through it post-surgery can help you do that, but it's important to set realistic goals and get the support to help you reach those goals. Find someone that supports you and that can keep you motivated through the tough times of this journey. But they also can help you celebrate the milestones as you go through and down the path. Don't be afraid of support groups. I was afraid of them for some reason. I don't know what that was about. But once I started attending some meetings, it was a great way. These people are struggling too. Sometimes they have suggestions. It's, it's important if your bariatric team has a support group um, that's local, that's awesome. You know, find those support groups, find those people that are supportive so that they can help you down the path and help you keep motivated, successful and moving forward. Another big one for helping you to prepare pre-surgery is recognize food addiction and also maybe hand in hand, maybe not, but the importance of physical activity. If all possible, if you have a, a known food addiction, it's really important that you address that before surgery if you can. It might mean that you might need a mental health care provider to help you really identify the role food has in your life and how to develop healthy alternatives. Having a smaller stomach or a rerouted digestive tract through bariatric surgery is not gonna meet the emotional needs 
that eating meats. Many people, I know I did, used food to help with stress, boredom. Even when I was feeling really good, I used food. However, this, as you know, is a short-term way to handle stress and handle the challenges. And if you don't deal with it, it just creates bigger and more problems down the road. Now, where does exercise play? Movement, activity, exercise, and I'm not saying go down and join a gym. I'm saying that movement, exercise, physical activity is much more than a calorie burner. It helps to manage blood sugar. It can decrease the risks of heart disease, helps with concentration, helps you sleep better, can improve your mood, and so much more. And those are all the things that helps you with your weight loss journey as well. Here's another thing to help you prepare pre-surgery. It's if you suffer from depression, seek help. Get something in place before you even start surgery. Because the honest truth is bariatric surgery is 80% effective. But it does take time, commitment, consistency, and just plain hard work and lifestyle changes to keep the weight off. It's super important to make sure our emotional energy is working for us as well. After surgery, your body is healing, it's recovering, and your eating, your coping mechanism is severely restricted. If you suffer from depression or you're prone to depression, it's even harder to stay on track, particularly if you struggle with a food addiction. Talk to your doctor, talk to your counselor, and start the process of getting help now so that you can maintain a positive attitude and have the strategies and skills to keep you going through the process. Understand the risks of other addictions. Alcohol, tobacco, other drugs can also undermine your weight loss efforts with or without surgery. Alcohol is high in empty calories and it actually reduces your inhibitions, so you're prone to eating more. You'll also feel its effects more after surgery. You'll get impaired quicker, the impact will be quicker, and for some of us, greater than what we're used to. Tobacco use increases the the risk of complications during surgery and after surgery. It can cause respiratory problems, it can reduce the healing, It can cause stomach ulcers. Patients who return to smoking after surgery can also develop like post-surgical stomach irritation. If If you're preparing for surgery and you're a smoker, you've probably been told to quit. Now is the time really to commit to quitting for long term. Talk to your doctor, talk to a specialist, and just get a plan in place to stop forever. A big thing in preparing for surgery is stop comparing yourself to others and stop looking at all the horror stories. Everyone has their own story, their own struggles, their own challenges, and their own way, unique way in handling it. Everyone will lose weight at different times and at different rates and at different levels. Someone who starts off heavier will have more weight to lose and most likely will lose it faster. Yes, complications can happen, but ask yourself, are you super hyper-focused on reading all the horror stories out there? It's important to understand that complications and risks can happen from surgery, it can happen from any surgery. And there's also possibly some side effects that you might experience, but don't focus on it. Don't be reading about them every single day and definitely don't be asking for them. It can happen, be prepared, but then you need to start thinking positively to focus on what you can control. The best person to compare yourself with is the person the week before, the person you were two weeks before, the person you were before surgery. Follow up, follow up, and then again, follow up. Ask all the questions. This is the time. It's pre-surgery. Ask all the questions. What should you be looking for? Ask your surgeon. Make sure you don't Walk away from the surgery without knowing what to look for. What are some concerns? When should they? When should you call them? Losing weight the first year, even though I said it's maybe one of the roughest times 
and it is one of the roughest times of the journey, but it's actually the easiest part of the journey. Losing that weight the first year is the easiest part. Keeping it off long term is the most challenging part. Build a relationship, a positive relationship with your bariatric team. Follow up also provides you with accountability to yourself, but to make sure you're on track. It'll help you check your blood work to see if there's any deficiencies. Having a plan, preparing pre-surgery for post-surgery in regards to following up and committing to following up, good or bad or ugly, if you gained a little weight, do not choose not to go to your surgeon because you gained a, few, a little bit of weight. That They're experts. This is You're not their first rodeo. They've seen it before. They If you can kind of address it as they are your best friends, they're your team members, they want you. They want you to be successful and support you. So don't like, for example, this is the kind of mindset that I had my first couple of times following up. I was like, oh, I have a follow-up appointment. I need to lose weight. What can I do? What quick little fix? What little diet can I do? So I'm, I'm less weight on the scale. That's old behavior. That didn't help me before. It's not going to help me after. I do everything I possibly can do. I follow up with my surgeon. If I have questions or concerns, we have a conversation about it so that they can offer me suggestions as well. The thing is, bariatric surgery, you're not just a patient for a set amount of months. You're a, you're a patient for life. So go into the process knowing that your bariatric team, your friends, your supportive friends and families are along the road with you. It's time now, pre-surgery, to practice eating on a schedule. You know that after surgery, you're going to be asked to eat on a schedule. You're going to need to eat all your protein. And most likely, you'll be eating every three to four hours just to be able to get that into your body. What about if you try doing that now? Start now. Map out a schedule of when and what to eat. Food prep is a really key way on staying on track. Prepare and bring snacks, balanced meals, all your fluid that you need, any backup protein shakes that you have, and take them wherever you go. Start now. Also eat like you've already had surgery. In other words, slow down, chew, chew, and chew. You're going to be amazed how slow you're going to have to eat after surgery. So it's important to start now. See how many times you can chew your food before you swallow. What does that feel like? How fast are you eating? These are things to try now so you can prepare yourself for post-surgery. If you have VSG, vertical sleeve surgery, your stomach post-surgery is not gonna be acting the same way as it did pre-surgery. You will have less gastric acid, digestive enzymes will be mixing with the food, and you're going to, it's going to be, it's just going to be a different experience. So you need to rely on your teeth to grind your food. I know that sounds weird, but you really need to rely on your food to grind your teeth because your stomach is not going to be able to do it like it did before. And so you need to use your teeth, chew, 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 so that it can help you before you swallow that food and regret that bite. Treat your water bottle like it's your third arm. Dehydration is one of the biggest post-op complications and it just adds a, just a plethora of additional issues to your situation. So you need to do whatever you need to do to get ahead and stay ahead of dehydration. So start now, pre-surgery, drink water, have that water bottle with you all the time. Do not, in your waking hours, not have a water bottle or a glass of water close to you within an arm's length away. Start practicing to drink the same way you will post-surgery. So it's all about sipping. You're going to be sipping all day long, every single, especially right after surgery, to get in the water. Because if you take an hour break, you're not going to gain that time again. 
to get all the water that you need to get into your body, um, which helps with weight loss, but also more importantly, keeps you ahead of dehydration, you need to be sipping all the time, every waking hour. And also again, for our, the BSG patients, your stomach is now prime, very restricted real estate. So you're gonna have to decide, and your surgeon's probably gonna tell you this, is that you don't wanna drink before or a little bit time after eating because you wanna get that protein in now as well. And so if you take up that space, that real estate with water, you're not gonna be able to get the protein in. So now pre-surgery, start doing all those things, start sipping all the time, you can't, you won't be able to gulp after surgery. So you're going to have to practice now. The more you can be prepared now when it comes to water intake, the better you, you will be after surgery. Keep yourself accountable. Track and monitor, especially the three main priorities. Your three main priorities will be water, number one priority, protein, and nutrients in probably the terms of your vitamins. The most successful weight loss individuals, be it bariatric surgery or not, but especially bariatric patients are the ones that track. They're tracking something, either be it your, their protein, their water intake, their carb intake. There's many things, but definitely the three main priorities at the very beginning, post-surgery, you need to track. It'll help you keep an idea of what you're doing, but also it can motivate you, you can set goals, and it's something to strive for. It's all about tracking and monitoring is not about judgment, shame, or guilt. It's really about showing you progress. It's about making yourself honest, and it just helps you move forward. Remember pre-surgery to Take pictures and take those measurements. The before and after pictures can be very motivating. You won't always see or even feel progress every single day. The pictures can also keep you on track or keep you from reverting back to old ways. If there's pictures that you just cannot tolerate your seeing yourself in, um, those will help you as you move forward and see that you're making progress from keeping you to revert to old ways. How many times, I know I did it, how many times have you avoided the camera, avoided the mirrors? I did it for a decade. I did not have a digital footprint for a whole decade. So I get it, but this is where, to help you with your progress, take those pictures, take those measurements, because they're gonna help you when you don't feel or see the progress. And measurements are a really great way to track progress. You will be amazed when you start totaling up all, like the total inches lost. And it definitely pictures and measurements are gonna help you when those stalls and plateaus happen. Because trust me, they will happen. They're normal and they're part of the progress. So when you're fighting that scale and maybe even seeing a little gain, I hate to say it, it does happen, it is normal. When you can pull out those pictures and measurements, it will help you get through and breaking through those stalls and plateaus. Start a journal or monitor for you, but also for your doctor and your surgeon. By writing down patterns and behaviors, what's working, what isn't, the sounds, the experience, the feelings, everything, mark it all down. It's going to help you remember because when we're going through it, when we're, you know, feeling pain, be it physical or mental pain, sometimes we just, we kind of want to fast track really fast through it. And we don't remember after the fact what happened. So it's so super important to kind of track those things and then bring them to your follow-up appointments. It will help you to remember, and it will definitely help your doctors and your surgeons understand, is our pattern happening here? Is there something they need to be looking for? Um, you know, they don't live your life like you do every single day. So it's super important to provide them the information. So journal and track, even when you don't want to, write those things down. It'll be a great resource tool, um, even later on for yourself to reflect back on. Okay, I know the biggest thing that people wanna know is, 
you know, what do you pack for the hospital? Well, once again, every program is different. Some of us stayed one night, some of us did an outpatient, some of us had to stay a couple nights. The things I can generally tell you is I suggest packing lighter than having a lot of things. For me personally, I packed a lot of things and I didn't even use hardly any of them. I slept most of the day away. I did stay one night. So my suggestion is pack light. Uh, some of the key necessity things is lip balm. You're, for some reason, your lips get very chapped. Uh, bring walking shoes because when you're walking around to get rid of that gas, uh, walking shoes is better than slippers in those hospital hallways. Uh, a phone charger probably for your phone. Maybe a book. I didn't use it. Um, and then comfy clothes. So anything comfy that you can return home after surgery and don't make it restricting around your waist because you're going to have those incisions there. Something who cares what you look like? As my mom used to always say, there's no fashion show at the bus stop, meaning who cares? You're going home, be comfortable so that you don't feel restricted and you can get home safe and sound without hurting anything on your body. Um, the other thing I can su suggest is really know how long you're going to be there, but be prepared for an extra day just in case you do have some side effects. And it happens to many people. It's not a big thing, but sometimes they just want to keep you an extra night. So kind of be prepared for that. Also ask your surgical center or wherever you're going to be, if it's a hospital or a surgical center, you need to ask what electronics can you bring? Sometimes they don't let you have electronics. So just be prepared for that. Ask who can be with you. Um, you know, our world is a little bit weird right now. And so sometimes they allow people in, sometimes they don't. Just, you know, be prepared. Who can be with you? Prepare on how you're getting home. A lot of places, if not all of them, um, is not going to let you just take a taxi home or they're not going to let you just go home alone. Definitely not drive home alone. So you need to have a plan on how you're going to get home. What's your support? Who's your support? Who's going to be there for you, at least for the first couple of days? Um, you know, it, it, once again, everybody's different. Um, we all have different needs. But typically, you know, you want someone checking in on you, at least for the first couple of days. And then is your home ready? And I don't mean like stock up and all those protein shakes and vitamins. You can prepare for that, but be really... Uh, hesitant with that. Uh, you don't want to stock up too much because a lot of times our taste buds change. And what happened to me is I stockpiled all these protein shakes and powders and mixes, and I couldn't stand them after. Uh, so I couldn't even get rid of them. Same with the vitamins. I know it's sometimes uh, a really good deal to buy them in bulk, but you want to be careful because sometimes too, um, that can change as well. So you just don't want to stockpile. Then you want to be ready and prepared for the first couple of days post-surgery. Like I said, don't overstock, um, really think that through. But the key thing I'm trying to say here for the first two days, or maybe even a week, and sometimes it's longer for others, you know, healing actually takes up to six months post-surgery. But that first week, those first couple of days is probably the roughest. So what you need to be preparing for and be ready for is that your job is to heal. You just had surgery. You want to monitor and track and you want to set goals and you want to strive to meet those goals. Now, not everyone's going to meet their goals, but you're going to try your darndest. And then you're going to try things the next day because every day is a little different. Sometimes you have a good day. Sometimes you have a bad day. You just want to make sure that you're trying all the things that you need to try and then you try them again tomorrow. Hydration is a priority no matter what. It, it, it actually is a priority in those first couple of days, those first couple of hours post-surgery, even over your protein. Your number one priority is to stay ahead of that dehydration. You might experience some gas pain and some constipation. Your sleeping might be off. You might be super tired, but even for some of us, we're hyper. So I can't tell you what's going to happen. Just kind of be prepared for those things. Have patience with yourself. Love yourself through this stage. If you are at all concerned, call your surgeon or your surgical team. That's why they're there. That's their job. If you're concerned, better safe than sorry. Ask them the question. And I hate to tell you, but be prepared. Some of us even have a little gain right after surgery. It's water weight. When our body 
um, has a sense of inflammation, which surgery is, is that it will hold on to weight. It's a normal uh, thing that the body does. So you might see that in, in weight gain. Don't go crazy. Don't let your mind go there. It will go away. It's just your body doing what it needs to do. And I guess the thing is just be prepared for the first couple of days, the first hours post-surgery is you're, you are not going to be feeling well. You're just not going to be feeling well. And for some of us, it might be the worst you've ever felt. But know and believe and trust the process. It will get better. You will get through it. Here's a big one. Prepare for stalls and plateaus. And yes, I said it before, even possibly gain. They're normal. Stalls, plateaus, and even a little gain or even slowing down of weight loss is normal. It's what your body is intended to do. It's part of the process and it's part of the journey. So preparing for surgery, part of the checklist is have a plan for that. Know, first of all, that it happens. It typically happens for many people week three. But remember, healing can take up to six months. So yeah, okay, you're going to have some stalls in that. Have a plan for regain. What are you going to do to avoid it? Part of preparation is just knowing that these things can happen and it's not, remember how you fall, it's not even about falling when you're healing in this first stage. It's about how to get up, how to navigate through those ups and downs and how to keep moving forward. And then I hear this all the time. Can I eat this? Can I eat this? Can I eat this? What about this? Can I eat this? I hate to tell you, I can't answer that for you. You can answer that for yourself. My first suggestion is, what does your program tell you? What are the guidelines? It, what stage food stage are you in? Are you still in liquids? Are you in pureed? Are you in soft? Are you in harder foods? It will all depend what stage you're in. But I hear it all the time. Can I eat this? Is this normal to eat? I want this. Can I eat this? There's two things I will say is when that question comes up, I would ask yourself, does it get you closer to your goals or does it take you further away from your goals? And then the second question, maybe more of a reminder, is there is such a thing called dumping syndrome. So for some, that could be excess sugar. For some, that's excess fat. For some, it's a combo of that. For me, it, was any, it wasn't any of that. It actually was that one bite too much. So if you haven't experienced dumping syndrome, it can happen. And it typically is because you pushed it too far in either a food item or maybe eating too much. And once you go through it, it happens. So be prepared. It can be a little bit scary. You will get through that as well. But my suggestion, why would you want to take the risk of having it in the first place? So for me, can I eat this? I think you know the answer. I would just ask yourself once again, does it get you closer to your goals or does it take you away from your goals? So let me know in the comments down below, are you prepared? Did I miss anything? Let's help each other out. Let's, that's what this is all about, right? Helping each other out. So did I miss anything? Put it down in the comments. What is something else that you should prepare yourself what should be on the checklist that maybe I've missed? So at the end of the day, what you put into preparation, being successful in your preparation pre-bariatric surgery is most likely what you're going to get out of it. Everything you kind of do to prepare, prepare yourself, not just physically, mentally as well, will give you probably a positive payback after. I say, remember, bariatric surgery, surgery day, is just the beginning. It's not the destination. It's not the end of the process. It's really the beginning. It's the beginning of your weight loss journey and you will have plenty of hard work moving forward. But I can tell you for many of us, the hard work, the time, the effort, the challenges is just worth it. It's worth it. And you'll see and you'll read many people will say they'll do it all over again. If you're committed to working towards long-term success, check this video out. It's time to get prepared and enjoy the journey.